What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, working in Studio One version four today. This is actually a follow-up video to the video I did a couple weeks back with respect to producing with the chord track. Now, one of the comments that came in on the YouTube comments and one of the comments that I've seen in general with the chord track is how do we go about rendering those chord track changes? So first of all, let's talk about why you would want to render those changes. Okay, well, we'll just say the obvious thing is that if you are committed to that particular key or whatever the case might be, or those chord changes, then why wouldn't you want to commit? It's confusing to have you know a MIDI event or an instrument part residing in your song where you have maybe a, you know a C, but it's actually playing back as potentially an A or maybe an F. So just render them, it's less confusing. The other thing is, if you need to export any of these clips as MIDI files for use in another DAW, or perhaps you wanna create some music loops and you definitely want to have the chords embedded in those MIDI events, or you want those to be the chords that you use. Okay, so enough talking, let's get to the meat and potatoes of things here. First of all, one area that I wanna point out is I noticed when I opened up this session and I played it back that I actually made an error. So I wanna quickly correct that. One thing you may have recalled is when we detected the chords in this audio event, that I said it's always a good idea to open up the music editor. We can click this chord icon and then we can double check these edit boundaries in terms of where they came in. I like to make sure they're residing at a musical value or musical grid value and that it's appropriate. Now, one thing that I didn't actually look at is that in this particular case with this strings track that we used, I actually want this chord change to happen over here. So now I've just made this change and these two tracks over here are set to follow the chord track. Let's toggle this on and off and you'll notice that change that just occurred. So let's wind this back and have a quick listen. Okay, so just get that out of the way. That was just something that was bugging me. Okay, so now on to what you guys clicked the video for. So whereas your initial thought might be the same as mine in terms of where or how we could render the chord track changes, you know, we have the option to render instrument tracks and essentially any transposing values that we've done on either the events themselves or the track level and also any note effects, those can get rendered in and it will actually give us new MIDI. So that was initially where I was looking for this feature to be. But I said to myself, I'm going to find a workaround because that's something that I see as being very useful, being able to render them. It's actually not much of a workaround at all. It's a feature or a function that's already there. It's musical functions. So if we go into musical functions and we go into freeze pitch, this essentially gives us a new starting point. Now, if your chord track is activated and your track is set to follow the chord track in some way, in this case, we're using a narrow mode. If I go ahead and freeze this pitch, you don't see any changes here, but watch what happens now if I take the chord track off. And if I activate it again, we no longer have the chord track icon visible, which indicates that something is happening with this track. So now if I were to export this piece of MIDI or this instrument part as MIDI, it would have the proper chords contained. Now, the other thing to note over here is that we can of course still edit this. So if I wanted to, for example, select all of the events and move them up two steps, if I was to now toggle this on and off again, you'll see that it has the chord track icon now because it's brought it back down in the proper key because Studio One has access to this note data. If I take this off, you'll see that it's changed again. So that's it, pretty simple fix. We right click, it's in musical functions and we freeze pitch and this then becomes the new starting point. Let's go ahead, let's do the same thing over here, musical functions and we will freeze our pitch. Now, like I said, we don't even have to have the chord track on for these instrument tracks to follow because we've rendered any of these changes that the chord track made into the instrument parts, into the note data. And keep in mind, this now becomes the new starting point as in a new blank slate as if though it was recorded this way. So that's rendering chord track changes into MIDI events or instrument parts, whatever you wanna call them. That's how we would go about doing this. So that's all the time I've got available for today. Again, if you enjoy this content, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. 
As always, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.